So here we are uh, taking a look at a foundation problem on a property in Lincoln, Nebraska. This is a former military-owned uh, military housing, and it's now owned by the Housing Authority in Lincoln. And uh, there's a lot of damage in this neighborhood. Uh, this particular property has pretty significant damage, uh, both from settlement and bowing walls. I want to walk you through and show you exactly how we diagnose this and what our solution is for the repair. So when I walk up to a house like this, oftentimes I'm taking note of exactly uh, what I can see that's obvious. This particular property has cracks uh, that are caulked like this one. Uh, really, they're almost all, all around. As I walk around, I'm seeing that horizontal crack uh, that's, that's pretty indicative of uh, the wall moving. I'm seeing a lot of vertical cracks as well that's fairly indicative of settlement. Um, and having been in these uh, type of properties before, I know that, uh, that it's fairly common for both of these to be occurring. Here's another uh, diagonal crack here with uh, caulk over it. So uh, I want to do my laser work out here. I also want to do it on the inside. I want to check doors and windows, floors, that kind of thing, because uh, I think there's probably quite a bit going on here. Okay, so now we're outside and I've got my laser set up here. I like to set it up on a corner if I can. That way I can take uh, measurements down two sides of the house. Uh, in this case, we have a brick facing on the house, so it's gonna be really easy to check, uh, check this house out and see where we are off of a mortar joint. Uh, that's definitely gonna be your uh, most common, uh, is either brick or block, uh, if you're gonna be using the laser on the outside. Uh, so right now I've got the laser set up where it's right on the corner. I'm gonna go ahead and do some measurements from the corner down this way. And I'm gonna do from the corner down this way and we're gonna see what we've got. So here I'm at the corner, I've got my dot right here and I am using the single dot mode with the laser. Because I'm outdoors and there's a lot more light, uh, it's a lot harder to see this uh, when it's in 360 degree mode. So I'm on the single dot mode so myself and the customer can both see it. Um, also, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just measure off of either the top or the bottom of one of the bricks like we did off the block in the basement. And in this case, off of this, uh, top of this brick, I'm at about three and a sixteenth to three and an eighth. And uh, with this laser, uh, I am gonna use the remote. You have to point the laser at the, uh, you have to point the remote at the laser. And uh, as I do that, I'm gonna be able to move the laser on down the wall. And I usually like to go about every six or eight feet with my measurements. So I'll just walk over here. And in this case, I'm at about two and seven eighths. And now you can actually see where my laser is actually going up onto the next brick. So I'm definitely getting some movement here. And now at this point, I'm at two and a half inches. So we definitely have some significant movement. I'm gonna to continue to do this around the rest of the house and identify exactly what we've got going on. So when we're out diagnosing foundation problems, one of the uh, things we're looking for is cracking patterns, damage to foundations. And there's actually a type of crack that is probably one of the most commonly misdiagnosed. I hear this from salespeople all the time. And we're actually looking at one of those cracks right now. We have a horizontal crack running on the exterior uh, brick here. And I have people, especially if there's much of a gap here at all, I have people diagnose this as a settlement problem uh, quite regularly. And um, obviously if we're running a laser along the brick and, and there's uh, a difference in elevation, then we may have a peering problem, but this particular crack is a clear sign of a bowing wall. And uh, so we don't wanna misdiagnose that. Even if we have a settlement issue, we also have something going on here with the wall. So what's actually happening is this wall, whether it's block or poured, is actually leaning in at the top. And as it leans in at the top, it's pulling the framing of the house with it. And as it does that, it creates this crack right here. So it's really important that we don't miss this because putting in piers is not gonna solve this problem. Uh, what we need to do is we need to stop this wall from tipping in at the top and bowing in in the middle. Uh, whether we're using a geolock anchor, power brace, um, those are gonna be your best options uh, for this type of problem. Here in the basement, we've got a wall that's bowing in pretty significantly. We've got some beams here that have been here for a long time and talking with the homeowner, it sounds like they've been here at least 30 years, probably longer. And um, they were done uh, by someone that, you know, obviously was trying to stop the wall from coming in. There's a few things I would have done differently. Uh, one, you can see here they cut a lot of the beam right where it's 
um, supported at the top, and so uh, there's not a lot of uh, a lot of beef in the in the steel up here. Um, and they they poured it into the concrete down here. Uh, they did a you know a pretty mediocre job in that. And uh, in this case, the homeowner wants the uh, wants the wall straight. They want us to avoid uh, damage. Uh, we're we're going to make it clear that without excavating and straightening this wall, we're not going to get it flush. Uh, but what we are going to do is we're going to do a wall anchor system here and we're going to use C-channel anchors to make sure that down here at the bottom uh, this doesn't come in anymore and we're going to make it clear to the customer that we can't guarantee that this uh, inch and a half or so of deflection at the bottom is not going to go back without excavating and straightening this wall. To save cost, they don't want to do that, but we are going to use the C-channel anchor just to be safe that it doesn't get any worse. And uh, all the walls in this basement actually look about the same, so we're going to be doing them all the way around. All right. Uh, I want to take a look at doors and windows now and the floor in the uh, main level of this house. Uh, something to keep in mind is if you don't have mortar joints to go off of, if the laser is not real helpful, this is going to be your primary way to check for uh, settlement. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this door here uh, just to give you an idea. When I hold the four foot level here, I want to use the four footer as much as possible because it's going to give me the most uh, indication uh, rather than a two footer. Uh, when I Put this here I'm able to see that in this four feet I've probably got a little more than a quarter of an inch I'm probably pushing half an inch down here on the end uh, and so what that tells me is I've got settlement this direction and uh, that it makes sense um, it's similar to what we saw in the basement it's similar to what we saw outside I'm starting to get a pretty good indication that the settlement going that direction and uh, I'm going to check other doors and windows oftentimes you'll find that if you have a door here that's showing settlement that direction uh, and let's say we had a door here a lot of times that door won't show anything because it's actually just uh, kind of the door itself is kind of rotating the frames not going out of square uh, and that helps you kind of figure out too exactly what's going on um, so something important to keep an eye on now I said I, I like to use the four foot level as much as possible which is true something though to keep in mind is I want to have my two foot level with me because sometimes when you're in hallways and tight spaces, you can't fit the four foot level. You still want to use it. You still want to show the customer exactly what's going on. So I like to have both the two foot level and the four foot level so I can give my customer an idea of what's going on everywhere in their house. So at the end of the day, they can make an informed decision. I'm actually out in the backyard here uh, and you can see we have a patio that's in pretty good shape here and uh, they want to avoid any damage to this. So what that means is a couple things. One. We're actually going to install our piers from the inside of this property so that we don't have to do any excavating out here. We don't have to tear any concrete out. And uh, they wanted a sump pump and some waterproofing done on the inside anyway. So we're going to go ahead and while we're removing the concrete, get that taken care of. Uh, and also what it means is we have to deal with if we're going to use power braces or wall anchors, exactly how we're going to do it. In this case, they, don't, they want to use a geolock anchor because they had I-beams that didn't work very well for them. Uh, they really weren't installed very well. I think that's the, the issue. It looks like they've been there for 30 years or so, uh, probably longer. So uh, at the same time, if this is what they want, that's what we're going to give them. So we're going to put wall anchors in. Something to keep an eye on on something like this is how far out do you have to come in order to avoid the concrete. So, uh, you know, on average, you know, we're coming out 12 feet-ish, 12, 13 feet. Um, and in this case, the edge of the concrete is 13 feet. So I'm just going to make sure that we come out at least you know, 15 feet or so. So I want to make sure that that's on my paperwork, that uh, they're going to need at least a partial extension on the wall anchor that ends up in this area. And uh, I also want to make sure that I uh, charge accordingly uh, when I write my, my proposal. So after looking over this entire property, um, inside and out, it has become pretty evident that there's a problem with both bowing walls and settlement. Uh, after talking with the uh, owner of the property, uh, what we're doing is actually installing 18 wall anchors and we're gonna be removing the existing I-beams that were done pretty poorly. And uh, we're also gonna be installing eight piers on this uh, side of the, of the duplex. And the part of the building that you didn't even see on the video is the other side of the duplex where they need a whole bunch more work on top of that. So all in all, we're gonna probably be doing about $40,000 worth of work on this property. And uh, we actually have a couple of other prop projects that we're gonna be doing on properties right here in this neighborhood, all for uh, Housing Authority, which is a type of uh, organization that it's clearly uh, great to get a good relationship with uh, because their work can come uh, year after year as their budgets uh, are approved. They uh, just continue to call back and get more work done. So a uh, good project and uh, we look forward to doing uh, many more for the Lincoln Housing Authority.